Hello, Jonathan. Hello. Uh, uh, Kristen, I had a quick question. The uh, meeting for the 8th, the session, is that at 12 or 11? It's at 12. Okay, I thought the uh, website had an 11 o'clock on there. Maybe. Mm. Did it? I don't know. I don't think so. Maybe. Maybe I uh, looked at it uh, incorrectly. But I had 12, but then I thought I saw something that said 11, but 12 is fine. Okay. Oh, you know what? It does say 11. You're right. John, can we switch that? That is supposed to be noon on the 8th. It's from noon to 1. Okay, so I'm not out of my mind. No, okay. you're not. <laughs> you are not. Okay. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Oh, boy. Uh, Kate, uh, are you presiding today? I am, Judge, yes. Okay, great. And so uh, I think I have it uh, next week, which is Monday. Monday is the time of our next hearing. That's right. Yeah, okay, great. So I'll take it. Okay, all right. If anybody wants to switch, just let me know. Yeah. <laughs> I will say that this is by far the, um, the highest pre-registration of attendees that we have ever had. As of earlier today, I think it was at about at almost 200. It was at 211 when I checked it at five, Kristen. There you go. All right, uh, we'll, we'll just get comfortable and be prepared to be here a little while. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, we only have we have 33 pre-registered attendees. I mean, I'm sorry, um, speakers. OK. Um, as we know, not all of them are able to, to show up every time. All right. Good. Good to know that difference. I was just thinking, geez, I should have eaten dinner earlier. <laughs> 200 people. <laughs> that would be. I had, I had three pretzels. <laughs> I wouldn't hold me over for 200 people. <laughs> yeah, you, you may need more than that, Kate. You may need. <laughs> oh, boy. The uh, three jurisdictions cover almost a million and a half people, though. So we knew it was mm -hmm. good. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. You got, Thank uh, you, Mary. Mary's got those numbers down. <laughs> So, um, Dr. Hetherington, um, yes. in the interest of time, do you want me just right at six o'clock to, to kind of start the, um, the uh, welcoming um, introduction comments and then pass it over to you? That would be great. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, Kate, you look like you've been doing this thing for a long time. <laughs> A real pro now. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm, I'm taking my lead from you, Judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now man. you know why they always talk about the wise judge. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy.
Kristen, I am hearing some background noise. Are you? I am too. Um, we have everybody. We have everybody muted. Yeah, it uh, looks like everyone but Judge Williams is muted. Okay, can you hear me? We can. We can. Thank you, Judge. All right. It's six o'clock, we'll get started in just a moment. Good evening and welcome to the fifth regional public meeting of the Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission. This meeting is being recorded. As we begin, there are a few matters we'd like to share regarding the rules and policies for this evening's meeting, as well as some tips to, about the platform that will assist our speakers in understanding how to use the Zoom platform a little better. This meeting offers Spanish interpretation. To listen in Spanish, you will note that there is a control box at the bottom of your screen. And within that box, there is um, a square marked uh, interpretation. You will just click on that and select Spanish and you will be able to listen to this meeting with a live Spanish interpreter. We do ask that the speakers remember that as they're speaking so that they remember to speak slowly and clearly so that the facilitator can assist with this process. An important reminder that there is a three minute allotment for speakers so that everyone who wants to speak has time to speak this evening. When there is 20 seconds left of your speaking time, a screen share will come on with a countdown timer. Inappropriate speaking, attire, behavior, or a background will result in removal from the meeting without an option to rejoin. Anyone, anyone registering after five o'clock today should ask to join a, as a speaker in the chat section of this evening's meeting. You can do that within that control panel as well. You, make sure that your name is on the list as you want it to appear. And if you ask to speak in the chat box, please make sure that you simply put your name and the county in which you reside. If you did not register to speak, but want to, you can also do that. It, um, I'm sorry, if you did not register to speak, but want to, please make sure you do that in the chat box and not in a message to the panelists. It has to be through the chat box so that we can um, pull you over when it's your appropriate time to speak. The raised hand option should not be used to request to speak. Speakers should ensure that their name is listed properly. And if not, please change it to reflect your correct name. We also ask that your name be simply your first and your last name and not the name of an organization with which you're, on which you're speaking on behalf of. This is because we have to move each person from an attendee section to a panelist section and want to make sure that we're able to move you in, in a proper format there. Please also note that that participant list is not list listed publicly because some people join by phone and we don't want to broadcast those phone numbers in the interest of their privacy. Pre-registered speakers will go first. Then people who request to chat through the chat box will be called an order of request. Speakers providing testimony should be aware that they will be made a panelist, which will enable them to unmute and turn on their camera. 
There may be a short delay while the speaker screen goes from attendee to panelist. This is normal. The speaker will see a screen message indicating that the host would like to promote you to a panelist. The speaker needs to accept by clicking join as panelist button. We'll wait about five to 10 seconds for the speaker to go live. Please remember that you will then have to hit your microphone button as well as your video button if you would like to use video. If the speaker does not join, we'll simply move to the next speaker and come back to the speaker at the end of the meeting. Once a speaker is finished, we have to move them back to being an attendee. This may result in the speaker seeing a spinning wheel or a message on your screen indicating that they are rejoining the meeting. This is normal, it's just the Zoom platform simply changing screens. We know that that is a lot of information, but want to assist you in understanding how this meeting will operate so it can go as smoothly as possible. With that, I'd like to introduce you to the host for this evening's meeting, Dr. Kate Hetherington, who serves as one of the co-chairs of the Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission. Dr. Hetherington? Thank you so much, Kristen, and thank you for the administrative support that you are providing for the Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commission. Lots of details, as you could tell, just by that introduction alone. So thank you for that. We'd like to begin, as we always do, with introducing the members of the commission, starting with the co-chairs, and I'll start with introducing myself. I'm Kate Hetherington. I'm a resident of Howard County, and I'm president of Howard Community College. Uh, Walter, if you would go next. Walter. Hmm. Walter. We may have lost Walter. I think we lost Walter. I, I, I just <clears throat> need a visual. All right, Judge. We'll come back to Walter. Would you mind introducing yourself, please? All right. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, I am Alex Williams, one of the co-chairs. I'm a retired United States District Court judge for the District of Maryland, and I reside in Prince George's County, Maryland. Uh, great to have all of you here this evening. Thank you, Judge. We'll now go to the members of the commission. Jay? Good evening, everyone. Uh, Jay Amin. I'm a uh, development consultant and uh, land broker in, in based in Ellicott City. I live in Anne Arundel County. Thank you, Jay. Cheryl? Good evening, I'm Cheryl Brooks. I'm a proud principal of elementary school and I reside in Baltimore County. Thank you, Cheryl. Mary? Good evening, I'm Mary Clausen. I'm a retired federal employee and I live in Anne Arundel County. Thank you, Mary. Kimberly Rose Cummings should be joining us in about 15 minutes. Uh, so we'll see her soon. Jonathan. Hi everyone, I'm Jonathan Fussfield. I'm a resident of Montgomery County and I'm a communications manager for a research firm. Thank you, Jonathan. William. Good evening, <clears throat> name is William Tipper Thomas. I'm a senior principal engineer for the Department of Defense. I'm also a grad grassroots organizer and I live in Baltimore City. Great, thank you. Let's see, do we have Walter? Yeah, I, uh, so, sorry, I lost my connection for a couple of minutes. My name is Walter Olson. I live in Frederick County and I'm um, with a think tank in Washington, D.C. is my day job. All right. We're glad we got you back, Walter. <laughs> so thank you, everyone on the commission, and thank you to everyone in the audience for participating tonight in this listening session for Baltimore County, Anne Arundel, and Howard Counties. Uh, Mary reminded me uh, prior to the meeting that that represents 1.5 million people and we have a good showing of participants tonight. So we're interested in hearing your testimony. This is the fifth uh, listening session that we had, virtual public meeting, and we have three more to come. The next one will be on um, Monday uh, for Baltimore County on July 12th, followed by Montgomery County on July 21st and Prince George's County July 28th, even though we uh, state that these are the counties, the reality is anyone who wants to participate is welcome to do so. So with that, we will listen to the testimony of our first uh, person who signed up. So Kristen, would you mind letting the person in please? Absolutely, and a reminder that we are calling people in the order in which they signed up. 
um, for the pre-registered speakers. Our first speaker this evening is Beth Huffnagel of the League of Women Voters representing Howard County. Beth, you are now a panelist. Good evening, Dr. Heddington and commissioners. My name is Beth Huffnagel from Elkridge in Howard County. I'm here on behalf of the League of Women Voters of Howard County. The leagues from Baltimore City and Anne Arundel County will also be speaking tonight. I promise we will not say the same thing. We would like to begin by commending Governor Hogan for establishing a multipartisan commission to kick off the 2021 state redistricting process. We appreciate that you are all dedicated to this approach to promote fair and effective representation in the Maryland General Assembly and Federal House of Representatives. Howard County has only one local government, the county. This does not make us all the same. The Patapsco River was an industrial powerhouse from 1770 through the 1800s, and the Eastern Corridor surrounding Route 1 and Interstate 95 is still dominated by industry, but also has new dense housing complexes. To its west is Columbia, the first planned city in Maryland that in five years transformed 15,000 acres of farms into a community. This was also socially transformational. Columbia was meant to be racially integrated from its opening in 1967. Further west from Columbia, the traditional farms and towns continue to flourish. So since you must split us because we don't have enough to be our own congressional district, please split us from north to south, not east to west. And I want to give an example. I'm sure you all know what gerrymandering is. People talk about congressional gerrymandering, but please take a look at legislative district number 12 in Howard County. It's a classic gerrymandered shape with two lobes connected by a thin strip. The league recommends flexibility as you, as you tackle the, the subtle question of single versus multi-member districts. Is the league's position that in some situations, multi-member districts better promote full minority representation and preserve political and community boundaries? Now, I do not speak of the league position lightly. For example, when we addressed the issue of single versus multi-member districts in 1993, a study had to be approved by the entire members in an annual convention. The study committees then spent at least a year spending all that they could uh, get from experts. It's also the key to why League of Women Voter positions are so respected. I thank you once again for devoting every Wednesday night for two months to this important work. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Ms. Hoffnagel. Appreciate your testimony. Our next, our next speaker is Julia Nichols Bryan, representing Baltimore City and the League of Women Voters. Good evening, members of the commission. Thank you for your service on this important endeavor. My name is Julia Nichols Bryan. I'm here as a Baltimore City resident and on behalf of the League of Women Voters Baltimore City. As you've heard from other speakers representing the League, we applaud your work, your transparent process and the principles that guide you, paramount among them, compact and contiguous districts, respect for political jurisdictions and natural boundaries, and although it's not in the governor's executive order, retention of communities of interest. We recognize that this is not an easy task. Guiding principles often conflict. A case in point is Baltimore City. Uh, do you honor political jurisdictions or respect communities of interest? Given that communities of interest often cross political jurisdictions as they do with Baltimore, it might be appropriate to have the city of Baltimore included in two or three congressional districts as it is now. However, particular care must be given to the lines that divide. At present, the lines are drawn in a way that is in some cases makes absolutely no sense and in some cases is so absurd that it really contributes to the erosion of faith in our democracy. For example, uh, one city neighborhood, Bel Air Edison, a small community with clearly defined boundaries and a real active 
sense of community among those who live there. It's divided into three congressional districts. There's one half on one side, one half on another side, and then a little skinny about a block wide down the middle of a third congressional district. So the question is, do all three congressmen represent the community? Do citizens know who to turn to, or does no one have the time to really prioritize this, this area? So respect for communities of interest is important to us, and, and we know it can be a challenge. So our first recommendation is, robust engagement with citizens in the map making process, as you've invited us to do. Um, with today's technology, citizens have access to map drawing software and you can expect to receive many proposals from community groups and neighborhood advocates on where it makes sense to the community for you to draw the lines in both the state and federal districts. Uh, the question of multi versus single member districts, we have a second recommendation and that is to retain multi member districts where citizens want them. As Beth Huffnagel has stayed, stated, the league has studied this for decades and the consensus is that Maryland is best served by a combination of both. And you may find that Baltimore citizens believe they are better served by multi member districts. In densely populated areas, dividing the population into single districts may create absurd lines of division that undermine fair representation. For me, speaking personally, Personally, I find that the multi-member district works well, such that we are represented in the Senate and House by officials to reflect the broad diversity of our district in experience, opinions, and interests. So we applaud and encourage the full consideration of an input um, that you are endeavoring here, but both with the map design and the question of multi-member districts. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Ms. Nichols Bryant. Our next speaker is Abby Root, also from the League of Women Voters, representing Anne Arundel County. Good evening, commissioners. My name is Abby Root. I am representing the League of Women Voters of Anne Arundel County. Thank you for volunteering your valuable time with your professionalism and dedication to the important process of producing fair maps. Maryland's 23 counties plus Baltimore City make up the state's eight congressional districts. And Arundel County has four of these districts, two, three, four, and five. In these four districts, Anne Arundel County is joined in parts of eight other counties plus Baltimore City. Of the eight counties in which we share representatives, Anne Arundel only borders four of them. Each Maryland County has its unique issues. For example, Anne Arundel County is bordered on the east by the Chesapeake Bay, the largest estuary in the United States. The health of the bay is affected by 12 primary watersheds. When it rains, the runoff from the watersheds flows downhill to creeks, streams, and rivers, which then flow into the bay. The bay faces serious ecological and environmental problems due to human activities. To help address bay issues, Anne Arundel County residents need dedicated representation, not more representation. Anne Arundel County's legislative district also should be drawn fairly. Anne Arundel is a growing county geographically, economically, socially, and culturally. We urge the commission to be cognizant of this when mapping the county. Thank you for listening and giving the residents of Maryland a voice in the redistricting process. Thank you, Ms. Root. Appreciate your testimony. Our next speaker is State Senator Ed Riley from Anne Arundel County. Senator Riley. Thank you very much. Um, it's tough to follow those wonderful women from the League of Women, women Voters, but let me uh, give it a shot. I'd like to divide my comments into two areas. First, on the congressional maps. Ladies and gentlemen, did you know that Anne Arundel County has more congressional representation than 17 states? 20 years ago, in a political payback, Governor Schaefer, who did not garner a majority of the vote of the citizens in this county, divided the representation that today does not include any one resident from Anne Arundel County representing us on the federal level. Congressman Sarbanes from Baltimore County, Rupert Berger from Baltimore County, Boyer from State St. Mary's County, and Brown from Prince George's County. We have over 600,000 residents of this county and we should have an opportunity to have a resident represent us. Please use this opportunity to reunite Anne Arundel County and correct this egregious political payback. Now, before Governor Schaefer took the knife to us, 
we had at one time a Republican congresswoman named Marjorie Holt. A few years later, a Democratic congressman named Tom McMillan. Let's use this as an opportunity to elect a homegrown federal representative. On the legislative map, I'd like to first address the Senate maps. I represent District 33, the heart of Anne Arundel County from the Bay to the river, from Glen Burnie down to Southern Maryland. 10 years ago, District 33 had been packed uh, to a super majority Republican district with a plus 5% of voters, the maximum allowed by law. Now, this did allow my district to give Governor Hogan more actual votes than any other district in the state. I guess I should not complain for the bragging rights that it gave me, but what it actually means is that other adjoining districts had artificially taken precincts away to make it easier to elect Democrats in these neighboring districts. I would encourage you to keep the balance of districts as close as possible. I would encourage you to keep District 33 in the traditional area that's been represented um, for over 35 years, which includes the Broadneck, Severna Park, Crofton, and Davidsonville. On the delegate races, I would concur with the governor's recommendation to create single member districts. With my 20 years as an elected representative, I have seen too many times a concentration of elected officials from a specific neighborhood on one side of the district or another. Thank you, uh, Senator Riley. Um, unfortunately, you are out of time. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your attention. Thank you. Our next, our next speaker is Paul Sundell from Anne Arundel County. Paul, you'll need to unmute your microphone and if you'd like to be on camera, enable your video. Uh, I hear him. Yeah. Okay. Now? Yes, we can. Yes, we can hear you, Mr. Sundell. We cannot see you, but that's your choice. Okay. Uh, how do I turn the, so you can see me, I'm sorry. Uh, the, on the control bar at the bottom of your screen, if you hover your mouse to the bottom of your screen, a control bar should pop up and it'll have mute and then stop video or start video. It's just kind of a, a little video camera that if it has a line through it, it means that you um, you don't have video. Um, I, uh, th thank you. And are you saying that it's on the far? Okay, great, great. It just came up. <laughs> there and, we go. Okay. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Progress. Th All right, Mr. Sundell, you're on. Thank you for your patience and that. Uh, I'm a retired federal macro economist. I live in in Suburna Park and I'm a registered Democrat. And I do want and I do want to sit second uh, Senator Riley's comments. Uh, Maryland is extremely gerrymandered. Uh, a, a, a Philadelphia cartography firm in 2012, 12 did a, a study, and Maryland was the most gerrymandered in the country on a congressional level, and we must get beyond the party. It is wrong. It, it, it is a major harm to, de to democracy, and we need to get beyond the party and go and say, it's wrong if your party does it. And, and, and I'm a, a registered Democrat. And what the state Democratic Party has done is extremely bad for 
democracy and representative government in the state. Uh, it it uh, it does make it so politicians are less responsive to the to the to voters. It, in, it increases partisanship, and it increases voter trust, 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 frustration, and apathy. So there, so the public is less involved in the legis in the legislative legislative process, and both parties are to blame in the areas and the states that 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 one party controls it seems to be more in in interested in its own self-interest than the public at large in, 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 in this area. And there is over, overwhelming support for an independent co commission. But uh, uh, it, 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 in, the, in the studies done by, by, by Goucher, no matter how the public was broken up, uh, over 70% of the public wants an independent commission to draw the, the lines, but we don't have that. And the major reason that we don't, we don't have a statewide e e initiative procedure for the, for the e voters. So uh, we really, Mr. Sundell, I'm yes. sorry, but you're out of time. But we so much appreciate your testimony. I thank you, and uh, I second everything that that Senator Riley did uh, say, did say, did say. And all right, sir. Thank you so much. Kristen, we have to go on to the next person to, um, for testimony, please. Yes, our next speaker is Von Tasha Sims of Charles County. Von Tasha, you're now a panelist. Von Tasha, you'll need to unmute. Ms. Sims, uh, yeah. we can't see you and we cannot hear you. John, if we could move on Tasha back to the attendee list, we'll call her uh, next. We'll try her again. Our next speaker is Raymond Zispersky. Zispersky, I apologize if I'm, mispron if I'm mispronouncing your last name. Raymond from Anne Arundel County. You are now a panelist. Raymond, you'll need to unmute. It's on the control bar at the bottom of your screen on the far left. There you go. Good evening. All right, sir. You can yeah. begin. Well, thank you very much for uh, having us on tonight. I applaud uh, the organization. It, it's a long, long thing that uh, should be coming on. I uh, totally agree with uh, Abby Ruth and as well as uh, uh, Senator Ed Riley. Uh, it's a fantastic thing for Anne Arundel County. I live in uh, District 3, Congressional District 3. And if you're familiar with it, I'm looking at the Congressional book right now. And the thing starts out in Northwest Baltimore County, snakes itself totally around the uh, 
the city, uh, going through Baltimore County and Baltimore City, such as a few lakes or a few islands out in the in a bay, comes through Anawana County and goes westward to uh, Howard County. And it, it's just a, an unbelievable thing. If you ever saw this, it, it literally looks like a snake. And I, I just can't believe that any person who would be representing this area would be familiar with the wants and needs of all the citizens. I remember being uh, at a fundraiser several years ago and a person who was running for this seat. Uh, and we talked to him briefly and mentioned uh, there's, there's some area here that the uh, Washington District of Columbia owns. It's a uh, de detention center for some of the youth. And when they break out, naturally they would want to go home down to uh, Washington, D.C. We're the very first area that they would hit. And of course, they steal our cars, mess up our, our community and all that, steal money from people. And when we mentioned this to uh, some of the people who are running for, for that seat, they just had, they just bugged out. Never even heard of the area. If you want to represent your area, you have to know what is going on in that area. And uh, we need to take and divide this, the, the state into areas where, let's say in, in Anaroda County, most of that county would have somebody living in that county who represents it and then represent a, much of that area also. It's uh, something that needs to be really done. But again, I thank you for, for being here and helping us out and hopefully that uh, this will work out again. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sapersky. And before we um, ask the next, next correctly. <laughs> thank you. Before we have the next person, I'd like to allow um, Kim, one of our commissioners to introduce herself. Kim, would you like to do that, please? Hi, my name is Kim Cummings. I'm a long-term resident of the Eastern Shore, currently in Dorchester County. I am employed with the Maryland Judiciary at the Dorchester County Circuit Court as a court supervisor of operations, specializing in the land records and licensing department. Thank you. All right, thank you so much, Kim. All right, Kristen, who do we have our, next? Our next speaker is Terry Coretta from Anne Arundel County. Terry, you're now a panelist. They didn't like the way the turnout was, but they cut it off. You're, you're live and we can hear you. So, Terry. You got your own screen, Terry. I got my own screen. Yeah. Terry, we can yeah. hear you, and you're live. You're a panelist now. Everybody. Is that true? Yeah. Ooh. Terry, would you oh, like us to wait. come back to you? Terry's the writer right up there. Mm -hmm. Huh? He's right there. I think we'll move on to our next speaker. Yeah, let's do that and maybe come back. Yes. Kaylee Lock Locklear is our next speaker. Who was here, but now I am. There we are. Kaylee, you're now a panelist. There we go. Good evening, Maryland Citizens Redistricting Commissioners. My name is Kaylee Locklear, and I am a resident of Edgewater, Maryland in Anne Arundel County. I'm looking forward to the commission's recommendations with regard to revisiting the congressional and legislative district lines in a fair and impartial manner. And I want to commend the Hogan administration for creating a balanced group 
with all parties equally represented. And I wanna thank all of you for your service. I too support single member districts as it addresses many issues like reducing the cost to each candidate who seeks office because the geographic area they run in is much smaller. It makes it easier for minorities and rural representation. But most importantly, we need fair lines that reflect real communities. Maryland, as you've heard and as you're well aware, is known for having some of the least geographically compact federal congressional districts in the entire United States. And I'd respectfully ask this commission to continue to honor transparency and public participation to ensure that we can help you redraw our districts to make them compact and truly contiguous. Our leaders have immense influence over our election outcomes that make it impossible to vote out incumbents or even ensure more moderate voices are electable. I urge the committee to enact single member state districts, ensure legislative districts keep communities together and redraw some of the most federally gerrymandered districts in our entire country. Thank you for your time and consideration this evening. Thank you, Ms. Locklear for your testimony. Kristen. Our next speaker is Jim Snyder from Anne Arundel County. Um, hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can. Good. Uh, so my name is uh, J.H. Snyder, assuming that by <clears throat> early next year, Maryland's legislative and congressional districts end up being gerrymandered as much as ever. I hope you will consider endorsing a redistricting jury when the gerrymanders are subsequently litigated. I briefly discussed the redistricting jury mechanism with two of this commission members several years back when they co-chaired the governor's 2015 redistricting reform commission. Now that that initiative has gone nowhere, I hope you will reconsider the fallback position of redistricting juries. I've discussed this proposal at a DC think tank event and in a series of op-eds published in Florida, North Carolina, and Maryland. The basic idea of a redistricting jury is very simple. Let a supersized jury choose among the competing redistricting plans as presented by their advocates, including say this commission's redistricting plan. Let a judge or team of judges convene the jury, explain Maryland's redistricting law to the jury, and then moderate the proceedings. Illustrious redistricting juries from the Campaign Legal Center and elsewhere have confirmed that judges have the inherent power to convene such a jury if they want to, even a supersized jury with hundreds of jurors. <clears throat> but as a practical matter, it has been exceedingly hard to get judges to enter the political thicket, including in Maryland and with its highly politicized judiciary. I don't know how to solve that political problem. For example, the, the judge has notoriously lacked the power of the purse and the sword. But it seems to me that however daunting it is, it is much less daunting than trying to get the Maryland General Assembly to propose and approve both legislative and congressional redistricting plans, not in its narrow political self-interest. As September rolls around and the redistricting process starts in earnest, I hope you will carefully consider the merits of this proposal. Thank you for this time. Thank you, Mr. Snyder. Kristen? Our next speaker is David Bishop of Anne Arundel County. David, you are now a panelist. Kristen, I don't see him yeah, I'm, or I'm hear him. Clicking connect to, I'm clicking um, promote to panelist. Wait, he, is he joining now? Not, not yet. No, okay. He's, 
Okay, he's rejoining as a web. It looks like he's joining now. I still don't see him. Yeah, I don't or, either. Or hear him. And I'm getting the notification that he's rejoining as a panelist. Mr. Bishop, we're going to come back to you. Um, there seems to be a, a technological issue going on right, right now. Uh, the next speaker is Jay Gerardin. Jay, you are now a panelist. Oh. Okay, we have both of them. Wait. Um, Mr. Bishop, if you could just stay there, we're gonna have uh, Jay Gerardin go first and then we'll move back to you. But we'll just leave you here if you no could problem. just- No problem. Okay. Jay, you're now a panelist. Uh, can you hear me now? We can. Okay, thank you. Thank you, members. I appreciate uh, having the opportunity to comment here tonight. I, this is Jay, I'm Gerardin. I'm a resident of Columbia out here in uh, Howard County. Um, I'd just like to say uh, we need to do better than, than what we've done for the last 10 years and, and actually more of that in Maryland. Uh, we have large areas of the state that are, are split up into, like here in Howard County, we have 300,000 plus people and we're in three districts at the congressional level. We should be in like one district. You know, Montgomery County should have its own district. Prince George's County should have its own district. Same with Baltimore, Baltimore County. Okay. What I would like to suggest is some thought be given to Howard County and Anne Arundel County, a good portion of that, all of Howard County and a good portion of Anne Arundel County being brought into one congressional district. Uh, right on the border between Anne Arundel and Howard County is Fort Meade. There's some hundred thousand people that are employed there. So there's hundreds of thousands of people that are directly impacted by employment at, in my, at, uh, at uh, Fort Meade. Actually, historically, Howard County was part of Anne Arundel County many years ago. So it's, you know, it's, it has a lot in common. We don't have much in common, relatively speaking, with like way north of Baltimore uh, or whatever else, the way that they've been split up now. I mean, uh, we would, we we're building a uh, a big cyber security uh, base here in Central Maryland. We're not Baltimore. We're not DC. We're not the inner suburbs of DC. We're Central Maryland, Howard County, and Anne Arundel. There's a lot of big uh, contractor base here. A lot of involvement with the government. And that's, we have that in common. But right now we're just a splinter off of these other districts where maybe 10, 20%. And frankly, I don't get, ever get the impression they really care much about us because we're just tacked on like 15% of the Baltimore members. Uh, those are large enough, Baltimore is large enough, it should have its own district. Baltimore County is large enough, it should have its own district. We shouldn't have to go stringing across the width of a, of a, of a highway to carry in five, dis, five districts here when they all have sufficient numbers. We have 6.2 million people in the consensus. We split that eight different ways. That's 775,000 people per district. We can do better than what we've done right now. Let's please try to improve it and consider combining all of Howard County with a good portion of Anne Arundel County for a congressional district. And lastly, please move to single member districts across the whole state and make it fair for everybody across the state. Thank you for thank your testimony, Mr. Gerardin. Thank you so much. Next. We'll move back to David Bishop, Mr. Bishop. Thank you, sorry about that. I was having some connection issues on my end, but uh, I appreciate what y'all are doing here and uh, hopefully you can hear me clear enough this time. Um, I, uh, I guess I'm just reiterating kind of what a lot of others have said today. Um, as a former congressional candidate in District 4, um, you know, I faced obviously living over here in Anne Arundel County uh, on the Broadneck Peninsula having to do a lot of campaigning uh, in southwestern PG County, 
a lot of times, um, being spread out across county lines when uh, counties are large enough to create their own congressional districts is, uh, is not just bad politics, but it's not good for uh, voters in general. Um, it reeks of voter suppression. Um, you know, PG County is by far large enough to have their own district, as Mr. J said earlier. Um, you know, Anne Arundel County is almost large enough to have their own district. Uh, I don't necessarily see a problem with uh, what he had said about combining, uh, you know, most of Northern Anne Arundel County uh, with uh, Howard County or potentially doing that in some, some other way that would work. But um, also uh, reiterating what Senator Riley had said earlier about potentially keeping the, the general outlay of District 33 specifically, um, but sticking to the geographical borders as have been outlined by the governor and um, making the Broadneck Peninsula its own uh, district, its own delegate district as part of District 33 uh, would go a long way. And I think that goes for all the peninsulas throughout the state up and down the Chesapeake Bay is that we should see all of them uh, run on their own delegate districts. Uh, the people who live on those peninsulas have a lot in common. Um, they need the same representation to make sure that their voices are being heard. And that's really what representation comes down to is making sure the voices of those areas are being heard proportionately. And so I support, uh, like I said, a lot of what's being said, but I just wanna reiterate it and uh, be one more voice to say that we need to see redistricting done compactly and in jurisdictional boundaries and hopefully also in geographical boundaries. So thank you all very much for what you're doing. I appreciate the work. Thank you, Mr. Bishop, for your testimony. Kristen? Our next speaker is Delegate Reed Novotny of Howard County. How are you all doing? It's a uh, delegate reading Monty. Good to see some of my friends out there. And I really appreciate what you do in this service uh, to our state. I think it's obviously very important as many of the uh, people who have testified tonight have said. Uh, I wanna reiterate the fact that Senator Ed Riley had some great points also. And this is kind of the theme of my testimony tonight. It is never the wrong time to do the right thing. I've talked to a lot of people in my travels as a delegate about one party does gerrymandering more in a different state than another state that we do it here. And that doesn't make it fair. Um, I want us to be the, the example for all states to follow in our representation. So I did a little uh, research uh, flying back to Texas the other day. And one part of the constitution, as you probably know, says article three, section four, each legislative district shall consist of adjoining territory, be compact in form and substantially equal population. My issue was the equal population. In 2010, when we had our census and redrew the lines at the state level, all 47 districts, the average Republican district was 121,000. The average Democratic, uh, I apologize, uh, the average Republican district was 126,000. The average Democrat was 121,000. That was a difference of 5,249. Basically what it meant was smaller districts equals more power. So all of the Democratic different districts were compact and small, spreading out the vote of the Republican held districts. That the difference between the averages was about 4.2% uh, and the worst was 9% difference. So with our technology that we have today, uh, as was mentioned it previously, we can make these districts even, like almost exactly even and represent people evenly throughout the state. I truly think the difference between how we redistricted last uh, census was the difference between having a veto-proof minority, having the ability to have the minority party sustain a veto in the Senate or the House is a big deal for which we pass legislation in our legislature. So again, I just wanna say thank you so much for your time and thank you for being on this commission. And remember, it's never the wrong time to do the right thing uh, and have a great evening. Thank you, Delegate Novotny. Our next, speaker, our next speaker is Jim Wass 
of Prince George's County, Jim? Start sound. So I see that I'm here, thank you. And going back to my notes, I was figuring one minute, so mine's a little bit shorter. Good evening and thank you for having me and thank you for serving on this important project. I am Jim Wass of Prince George's County. I'm a document review attorney and I have a long background as a business process analyst where among other things, I help businesses, government and other organizations make work simpler and more intelligible. Gerrymandering might be described as the science of rendering districts unintelligible. While one, uh, one representative might adequately serve disparate interests, that individual's work is greatly simplified and improved with a clearer and more intelligible scope of re representation. A key element of representat representative democracy is affinity. Our affinity groups begin with family and local community. Ensuring that the communities are commonly represented in compactly drawn contiguous single member districts will best achieve that end. Of course, uh, the wide ranging uh, population densities, uh, municipal and neighborhood uh, boundaries, they're gonna spoil any perfect solution. But every first draft, every first draft should begin with the assumption that any state and federal districts will respect the readily available geographic boundaries defined by community, municipality, or county. Thank you very much and have a good evening. Thank you, Mr. Wass. Kristen, our next speaker. Our next speaker is State Senator Brian Simonair of Anne Arundel County. Senator Simonair. Thank you. I'm assuming you can hear me? We can. Great. Well, I want to thank you all for uh, listening to Marylanders regarding this important issue. Uh, you're, when is the you start my video? There you go. Okay, they wanted to see my video. There you go. A real person. Um, so your commission represents the best hope Maryland has of removing politics from be determining its representatives. I'm Senator Brian Simonair. I'm the Republican minority leader for the Maryland Senate. There are three key elements I believe you should consider when preparing for redistricting. One is make the focus about people, not politicians. This is the basic issue for drawing maps. As Republican Senate Minority Leader, I am not here asking you for maps favorable for any one party, but rather to focus on helping the people. I ask this commission to come together for the good of the people and draw fair maps that will benefit the people of Maryland. The second issue is keeping communities and counties together. Look no further than Anne Arundel County with its four congressional representatives, none whom live in the county. And this is brought up before, so I won't repeat it. I'll just second basically what they were saying. The last thing I wanted to bring up, and maybe it hasn't been brought up yet, but where possible, reduce the primary only districts. Despite the majority of Marylanders being relatively moderate, through packing the legislative districts with high concentrations of one party, we have seen nearly all the moderate politicians voted out of state office. Too many legislative districts have been drawn, so the primary election is the election, and the general election is not competitive. Primary voters tend to be fewer in number, but more passionate with stronger and more extreme positions. This type of district creates extremes in Annapolis as representatives tend to only listen to those that elect them in the primary election. While packing legislative districts is a method to obtain more seats for a party, it has an adverse effect on the policies in Annapolis and does not reflect the general population of our state. Thank you for your service on this commission and I look forward to seeing a great product. Thank you, Senator Simon Ayer. Kristen. Our next speaker is I, William Zartman of Montgomery County. Howdy, I'm uh, William Zartman. I'm uh, a professor emeritus at Johns Hopkins University. I'm a mem um, resident of Montgomery County, uh, but I've lived in Annapolis, so I feel at home with this evening's discussion as well. Um, and my son was born in Annapolis. Um, your, your, uh, values that you want to maximize are representativity and diversity. And by di diversity, we mean not only diversity of people, but diversity of ideas uh, as well. Uh, and uh, 
<clears throat> you would think that a multi-party, uh, a multi-member district would uh, bring about diversity. I can't get my video on, so you can't see my face. Well, the heck with it. Um, uh, you would think that a multi-member district would bring greater diversity, but that's not true. Throughout the world, single party states have multi-member districts. And that's because multi-member di districts bring in a herd community idea. They all stick together. Um, they diverse, uh, they separate the jobs, but they represent the community in block. Whereas a multi-member district, a single member district, I'm sorry, represents the individuals. And uh, as the previous speaker said, we want our own district. Think about it. If Maryland were a multi-member district, the whole state, and every, if everybody were elected at large, you would have one party, a one party state. We don't want that in our district. We want to get individual representation. We want individual diversity. And I think the community, the uh, committee should think about this. It doesn't want to be a, a, a means by, winning, by putting into effect a single party state. It wants to bring out the possibility of diversity throughout the, the uh, state. And that means single member districts. Thanks very much. I'm glad to have been with you. Thank you, Mr. Zartman for your testimony. Kristen, our next speaker. Our next speaker is Daniel Menning, Menninger from Howard County. Daniel, you're now our panelist. Good evening. Uh, my name is Dan Menninger. I'm a business owner here in Howard County. And um, thank you for giving me the opportunity to testify on this issue. We rely on government to break up monopolies in business. Uh, we know that monopoly disrupts the economy. It creates, it keeps new ventures from entering the marketplace, and it opens the door to corrupt practices. I oppose gerrymandering for the very same reasons as I oppose business monopolies. When politicians pick the voters, they disrupt the political process. Gerrymandering prevents new candidates from su successfully joining the process, and it contributes to cynicism about our entire political process. Some say that we would stop gerrymandering if another state did it. This statement indicates that we already know that gerrymandering is wrong. And frankly, it's illogical. My mom would never let me get away with an argument like that. So eliminating gerrymandering is common sense. And I'm hopeful that this commission will create a legislative districts that makes sense. Two additional thoughts about redistricting. First, please make all state legislative districts single member districts. The team approach now used in many areas of the state means that political insiders literally pick the next elected officials and they use their combined resources to keep out new voices. Second, I hope we can uh, start filling vacant seats with special elections rather than by appointment. The power of the incumbency is so great, it should be earned by winning the support of people rather than given as a political prize for some unspecified service. Redistricting is a civic, not a civic process, not a political process. Today, politicians should, should not be given oversized influence in creating districts because legislative districts do not belong to Democrats or Republicans. They belong to the voters. And I see gerrymandering as a, vote, as a form of voter suppression because if you believe the game is rigged, you'll be discouraged from playing. So thank you for all the hard work that you are doing. I'm grateful that you're standing up uh, to look at this issue. I know that Maryland can do better if we can eliminate gerrymandering. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Medinger, for your testimony. Our next speaker is Delegate Michael Malone of Anne Arundel County. Delegate Malone. Good evening, everyone. Um, thank you for your time and your commitment to um, appropriate districts within Maryland, both on the state legislative district um, and on the congressional districts. Some of you may know that I have for years championed having legislation put in place that would require the congressional districts to be drawn 
following the constitutional language for our state districts that they be compact and continuous and give due regard for geographic and political boundaries. Unfortunately, the General Assembly has either decided to give a quick vote or no vote at all. No vote at all is what occurred this year regarding that legislation. I've also put forth legislation that would require the districts, both congressional and um, on the state legislative level to follow the language that came from the federal courts um, for, the, for the Maryland federal courts in Benesek versus Lamone and requiring that basically that you would not take into account a political affiliation when the districts were, were drawn. And of course, this is the mandate that this commission is to follow. And I think it's an appropriate mandate because if, as you all well know, and you've heard many people testify and you'll hear many people continue to testify that by gerrymandering the districts, you cause very polarized districts to exist and good policy often will fall in the middle. And unfortunately, it makes it difficult for someone to be elected if they aren't going far left or far right, where the best answer often lies more in the middle but individuals who are willing to consider good policy that may very well be in the middle have sometimes a very difficult chance of being elected because they can't win a primary. Therefore, I commend you for your efforts and I hope that you will put forth districts that are apolitical, that enable communities to be intact for, we don't have scenarios. Um, by way of example, my community prior to my current home, one side of the street happened to be, is now District 21, and the other side of the di street is District 33, which makes very little sense. We have the same things that exist in congressional districts, the Broadneck Peninsula, which is in part of State Legislative District 33, also has two different districts, and Anne Arundel County as a whole has four congressional districts. So thank you for your time and your commitment and listening to us tonight. And I wish you the best in drawing appropriate congressional and state districts. Have a good evening. Thank you, Delegate Malone. Kristen, our next speaker is? Our next speaker is Zulika Bazemore of Baltimore City. Hello. Hello, Ms. Bazemore, we can hear oh, you. Thank you, can you hear me now? We can hear you, yes, we, we okay, see your picture. Good. Okay, thank you. Um, good evening um, and thank you to all the members of this redistricting co um, committee. Um, I also wanna thank our governor, Governor Hogan for formulating um, this particular committee. It is so vital especially after the 2020 elections and even if um, after um, the 2016, the last time, I believe in 2010, where redistricting took place. Um, I'm Salika Baysmore, and um, I'm the appointed chair of the BCRCC, which is the Baltimore City Republican Central Committee Grassroots Subcommittee. Um, I also am a business owner, um, CEO of Z-Bay Development Group, LLC in Baltimore City, former Republican mayoral candidate in 2020, and I am co-organizer of the Voice of the People Accountability Movement here in Baltimore City. We have several serious issues plaguing our city um, right now. The number one issue in Baltimore is violent crime. Baltimore City has right now six districts, I believe, and due to the redistricting, uh, we might only end up with five districts. But um, speaking to several um, of our constituents um, with our accountability movement, this voice of the actual citizens here in Baltimore City, a lot of us really feel that even though the formula is based on population, when it comes to redistricting, um, I, I tend to agree with some of the speakers here tonight that um, more fair representation is needed um, to alleviate the possibility, even of the appearance of unfairity 
the appearance where there's a dominant power ruling um, even in Annapolis because um, it is so important that um, the, the representation is diverse. The representation is actually covering all of Baltimore City and not just portions. In some districts, as I said, we're sharing a border already and it, we're split. So it lessens our representation um, from three to one um, in terms of delegates. So um, I have 18 seconds. So um, I just really, we just really feel that single districts, um, if we form them and create them in order to narrow the monopoly of just a one party rule, mm -hmm. we need to diversify when it comes to representation here in Baltimore City, especially to bring forth more diverse, bringing forth more difference of mindset when it comes to policy and less restriction in order to successfully change our city of Baltimore. All right. I want to thank you to me. I hope you guys come yes. up with a great plan. Thank you so much, Ms. Baysmore. We appreciate your testimony. Kristen, our next speaker. Our next speaker is Francis Yui. I apologize for the pronunciation of that last name if I'm getting it wrong, from Howard County. Francis? Yes, hello. I'm Francis Yui. I'm in Howard County, mathematician and information technologist. I've uh, been interested in redistricting for a long time. Uh, I hope you all are too. A um, few comments. One, uh, I just want to mention the For the People Act, which is currently stuck in the Senate under Joe Manchin's ass. He's terrible. But uh, if it would get passed, your commission would actually matter. So that would be great. I suggest everyone try and get that passed. The other thing about it is that it has a lot of good suggestions. Um, one of them is that uh, independent redistricting commissions should ex post their, their proposed maps online for the public to look at and also accept submissions from the public. And uh, I hope you do that because uh, I love playing with Dave's redistricting and I uh, would send you plenty of suggestions. The other thing is, more importantly, uh, it's my understanding that the General Assembly is under no obligation to use the maps that you create. So I hope that you are reaching out to them and doing whatever is necessary so that they actually will act on what they're doing. Otherwise, this is all just a waste of time. That's all I needed to say. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Mr. Uli. Our next speaker, Kristen. Linda Dorsey Walker from Baltimore City. Linda, you're now a panelist. If you could unmute and you can start your video if you would like. Actually, I've elected to speak on Monday when Baltimore County speaks. I'm not from Baltimore City. I'm from Baltimore County, but I do appreciate you calling my name. I'll see you on Monday. Sounds great. Sounds great. Um, our next speaker then is Shannon Wright. Shannon Wright of Baltimore City. Hey guys, you got uh, Sean McCurdy here. I think you added me as a panelist by yep. mistake. It, it moved just as I was doing it. Shannon is on now as well. Sean, we'll move you back to attendee. Okay, Ms. Wright, we see you and it looks like you're unmuted. So please proceed. Good evening. Um, Good evening. You've heard most of the points that I'd like to make here tonight. Um, I live in Baltimore City and we've talked about gerrymandering. We've talked about um, packing the legislative districts and how when you do that, most folks represent only one party. So I would say to you to consider your decisions carefully because Baltimore City has been forced to live through what that looks like without diversity of thought, without diversity of policy, without diversity of party representation. This country fought some hard battles over representation and different issues in the past. And Baltimore City has served under and suffered under one frame of thought, one party rule, and everyone in the state of Maryland is currently paying for those issues. 
So I would like you to consider carefully how to do what you're tasked to do. And thank you again for putting your time and effort in, but in a manner that actually can uplift and help the residents of Baltimore City. Thank you. Thank you for your testimony, Ms. Wright. Kristen, our next speaker. Our, our next speaker is Zaylee Harris of Charles County. Can you hear me? Yes, we can, Ms. Harris. Great, thank you. This is my third time um, attending as a virtual panelist. And I wanna continue to say thank you for the work that you guys are doing. I am a member of the Charles County Republican Central Committee as secretary. And basically, I just wanna say the same thing. And that is single member districts at all possible. Fix Maryland, please fix Maryland. Stop the gerrymandering and allow contiguous um, uh, in boundary neighborhoods under the single member districts. That's it, short and sweet. Thank you very much. All right, thank you, Ms. Harris. Our next speaker. Our next speaker is Mark Ritterpush from Anne Arundel County. Hello, good evening. How's everybody today? Um, good. Uh, good evening. For the record, my name is Mark Ritterpush, and I'm a resident of Anne Arundel County. I believe very few people will disagree that partisan gerrymandering has been and will continue to be an issue, though having an independent commission like yours is a great step forward. I've testified nearly every time a redistricting bill has come before the Maryland General Assembly over the last several years, and I will continue to do so until a commission such as yours or its equivalent isn't just one governor's decision codified into law. I'd like to ask everybody else who's here today delivering their own testimony to do the same. As far as this commission is concerned, however, the most important individual issue I'd like to implore upon you today is the elimination of our hybrid multi-member districts. Gerrymandering can be beneficial in very specific circumstances, such as keeping ethnic or historic communities together. Our current hybrid system, however, does not work toward that interest. It only empowers those who draw lines so often to make more and more partisan divides, often splitting these communities. I personally, personally believe the best and most fair way would be the use of single member districts as multi-member districts dilute the relationship between representatives and voters, as well as the accountability of individual representatives to their constituents. Single member districts also allow you to keep the ratio of constituents to representatives much more manageable allowing lawmakers to better understand the needs of their constituents and become more intimately familiar with the community. In conclusion, I beseech you, please eliminate hybrid districts from the state of Maryland. Doing so will help keep our communities together and lawmakers accountable. Once more, single member districts promote accountability for legislators, promote continuity of community and promote legislator familiar, fam excuse me, familiarity and intimacy with their constituents. That's all I have. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Mr. Ritter Push. Kristen? Our next speaker is Danielle Smith of Baltimore County. <clears throat> Hello? Hello, Ms. Smith. Hi, how are you? Good evening, everyone. Okay, so first of all, I just wanted to say, in my opinion, um, and I'm speaking for residents. I was a, grew up in Baltimore City. I now reside in Baltimore County. So I have a lot of family and friends in Baltimore City. Gerrymandering and redistricting has hurt the, com, the minority communities. The district should reflect the residents. Diversity and generational is very important. I wholeheartedly do not agree with a one legislated per district. In fact, we need more representation. Baltimore County has over 830,000 residents and underrepresentation is evident, especially in the black and brown communities. Then the inequality and the inequity is evident. Our schools on a scale of one to 10 is ridiculously low. Um, the appreciation value of our homes has depreciated because of that in addition to um, affordable housing, which is in turn a new term for section eight. Our county council only has one minority member 
should he run for something else and leave, there will be no more representation of a minority member. There is no reason why in 2021, we still have first minority anything. While we appreciate all that you do, no one can speak or represent a community better than the individuals who look like and understand their long time, the long time issues and concerns and needs of the minority community. We don't need any more self-service. We need advocates and voices that truly represent our communities. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ms. Smith. Kristen? Our next speaker is Sawandi Brown Lawson of Charles County. Hi, yes, uh, my name is Shawande Brown Lawson. I'm a resident of Charles County and I'm here as an independent voter. I'm gonna be extremely brief, but I was made aware of this opportunity to provide comment by the Charles County Republican Central Committee. And I just hope to convey that I hope uh, the ultimate decisions that are made will one, instill confidence in our representative process, two, will shine the spotlight of integrity and accountability on the part of our representatives to protect the interests of those they represent, and three, will not dilute the diverse views that exist not only in our densest areas, but also in our rural areas as well. I'm in favor of uh, single member districts so as not to dilute or, sorry for the repetitiveness, but even appear to dilute the diverse voices and votes and uh, the unified as well as diverse needs uh, that shape our state. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Mr. Brown Lawson, for your testimony. Kristen? Our next speaker is Vontasha Sims, who I believe has joined us via the phone. Vontasha? Hmm. She's muted. Vontasha, can you unmute? Here we go. Yes, hello, good evening, everyone. How are you? I'm Ms. Sims. Uh, first of all, thank you for having um, this commission here. Uh, my name is Vontasha Sims. I'm a resident of Charles County, Maryland. I'm also a member of the Charles County Democratic Central Committee um, as well. I just want to talk about a few things when it comes to redistricting here in the state of Maryland, when it comes to dividing our communities, um, dividing our wealth, dividing our economic power when it comes to um, natural boundaries, such as highways, roadways, rivers, streams, when it comes to our school system, and when it comes to our neighborhoods. Um, a lot of times when it comes to this process, uh, a lot of times my communities and communities that look like myself are oftentimes times underrepresented not only in Annapolis, but also locally as well. So we want to make sure those communities, um, their voices are not taken away, their votes are not suppressed, and also they're not used in the wrong way when it comes to empowering the people of the community, which is the main important issue uh, that we really need to address here. Also, I want to make it clear that even though the governor has ordered this commission, um, we as a county, and also we as a people uh, within the state of Maryland still have the opportunity um, to object to that or, or to request change or whatever have you in that process to make sure it's a fair process to us. And, and also to make sure that we do have a final say and a final voice um, as to how this process goes along. I would like to see a lot more transparency when it comes to uh, the current maps that we have uh, when it comes to what ideas are even being put into place, what those numbers would look like, what the de uh, demographics of those areas are, um, exactly what are the governor's orders, um, and exactly um, how much leeway do we really have uh, when it comes to um, you as a committee abiding by those orders. So once again, I just want to express um, to make sure that the community has an opportunity to be fully aware of what's going on within this process, that you're really getting out into the community and notifying the community. Because a lot of people don't even know that this process is even in existence. A lot of people don't know the difference between single member, 
multi-member, gerrymandering, apportionment. People don't know the definitions of those things. So you really need to get out into the community more to inform the community as to how important this process is. And we still have not really even received uh, the census numbers either. So that's another very important issue. So once again, thank you for having this, uh, this uh, commission here. My name is Vontasha Sims. I'm a resident of Charles County, Maryland. I'm with the Charles County Democratic Central Committee. And I'm also uh, a born and bred resident of Anne Arundel County as well. So it's a very thank important you. issue to me. Thank you, Ms. Sims, for your testimony tonight. Kristen, our next speaker. All right, we're going to go back to Terry Coretta. All right. See if we can make that work now. Terry, you're a panelist. If you'd like to unmute. Ms. Soretta, you're, you're still muted. There you go. Okay, you can begin your testimony, Ms. Soretta. Terry? All right, I'm um, not yeah, sure what the problem yeah. is. Yep. Um, we're going to move then to Richard Elliott. Richard, you are now a panelist. Uh, hello, can you hear me? We can. Okay. It's George's thank County, for, by the way. Yes, thank you for the opportunity to chime in on redistricting. Uh, well, I am not. I, I am in favor of single member districts and have in the past have written articles uh, supported by Peter Francho in favor of single member districts. I believe that the key element for redistricting is an independent commission that just as important as does not racially or political or partisan gerrymander also does not take into primary consideration the current addresses of elected officials or just as important the addresses of their opponents. When Maryland legislators draw maps that intentionally remove legislators or intentionally uh, keep legislators in a, in a district that's very, very particular for them, over time, it ends up having the effect where elections are basically not happening because they are so, so easily decided with the slate process, with large sums of often developer money ending up going to the slates. Beyond simply the redistricting aspects of this commission, there needs to be uh, a deep search and uh, an answer for what's gonna happen with the central committees, both Republican and Democrat, which have appointed nearly a third of our legislators in the state, central committee should be gotten away with as others have, been, have said in this call, and there should be special elections in the legislative districts. Uh, and within the city, when the maps are redrawn as District 44A is going to be removed, there should be meetings within the city to determine where those residents of districts which will be gotten rid of are going to be moved to. Finally, I would hope that within all parts of the state that no neighborhoods are divided among themselves, all neighborhoods are kept whole so that neighbors know who represents them. Thank you, I yield my time and I wish for the best of this committee. Thank you, Mr. Elliott for your testimony tonight. Our next speaker is? Um, I'm going to read through some of our speakers that um, were not, uh, we did not see them in the attendee panel that we have. If any of these people are on the phone, uh, I'm, I'm afraid that your, your numbers are not identified as you, and I would suggest that you register for the next meeting um, or, or sign in again. Those individuals are Deja Williams, Tracy Matthews, Lisa Fry, Christopher Irvin, Antonio Patoco, Albert D. Vittorio, and John and Maria, if you guys could um, look through the list as well and highlight those individuals so I can see if they've been able to join us. Our last speaker, if none of them join, is Evie Harris of Baltimore City. 
who um, requested to speak through the chat feature. And now I am unable to find Evie. I think that Evie has left the meeting. Kristen, you also have Richard Elliott as a panelist still. Thank you. All right, do we have any other speakers tonight? I don't believe so. If you could just give us a moment to go through sure. this list, we'll go through it. No, I don't believe that any of the additional speakers have um, been able to join us. If they have joined by phone, um, we do have a few people that are on the, the line, but um, none of their names are marked. Um, so I don't know who they are. So again, if, if any of those names that I have called have joined us, um, through by phone and we didn't and we called your name but we were unable to promote you to a panelist please please go back in to the link for next week's meeting um, that will be held on Monday next week and and register there and and we will see what we can do you can also send an email to redistricting.commission at maryland.gov and we can try to troubleshoot that for you as well and with that we do not have any more speakers for this evening all right, thank you, Kristen. Do we have any other uh, business, any additional business for the commission tonight? Kristen? Not, not that anyone has emailed. Okay, um, I just would like to remind the uh, listeners that the um, website redistricting.maryland.gov is a tremendous resource uh, for some of the comments that were presented tonight. So I would suggest anyone Who's, who wants to learn more, wants to look at the um, glossary of terms that came up, uh, please reference that. So um, we will have, we typically have these meetings on Wednesday evening, but um, we will have a meeting as, instead on um, Monday, uh, July 12th for Baltimore County. Anyone, as you have seen tonight, um, can come in from any of the Maryland residents can testify. So please do so uh, if you're, free on Monday night or if you know someone who wants to testify. And with that, I will ask for a motion to adjourn. Before we adjourn, uh, Madam Chair, I want to publicly thank uh, Gloria Blackwell for uh, reaching out to the uh, Hispanic and Latino communities and making sure that they have been aware of these proceedings and these hearings. And I thank her for that. She's our, uh, uh, I guess she'd be our advisor. And yes. I'll thank her for all the work that she's doing right now. Yes, thank, she's thank doing you. an excellent job, Judge. And thank you so much for mentioning uh, the work of Gloria and uh, doing tremendous outreach in both English and in Spanish. So yes. we reach well, as many people as possible. And again, we ask the listeners, spread the word. That's how people can get involved. So please do that. We have Many hearings, this is the first round, and then we'll have a second and third round coming up. Any make, other comments? I'll make, a motion. I'll make a motion to adjourn. All right, do I have a second? Second. All right, Jay, all in favor, signify by raising your hand or saying aye. All aye. right, <laughs> meeting is adjourned. Thank you, everyone, and we will see you tomorrow or on Monday. <laughs> Thank you. So is me and you, Cheryl. <laughs>